Hey, what's going on guys? Jolts here, and today I'm going to be doing a speedrun on the Tina DLC. And this is a full gear, any percent speedrun segmented also. So this is basically a very broken DLC. I'm going to show you here pretty quick. Um, yeah, so first off, we're going to have the cutscene play, so I'm going to go ahead and be quiet, let that pass, and then I will come back. Once upon a time, the Vault Hunters played a game. The world is on the brink of going boom boom. This is our most desperate hour. Unless we make a stand here and now, we're gonna die. Now. Roll for initiative! What's initiative? It says which order we attack in. I punched the initiative. What's going on? I wasn't paying attention. <sighs> Tina, why don't you start over? <clears throat> Welcome, fine ladies, to your first session of the most coolest game in the world, Bunkers and Badasses! As your Bunker Master, I will be spinning today's tale of fantasy and... Wait, why the hell are we playing this kid's game? Oh, you know, maybe because... Shut the hell up, Morty! Tina? She's right, though. Shut up. While our vault hunting buddies beat the slam jam out of that Hyperion informant downstairs, I thought we could play a game. Now, pick your characters. You got the Necromancer, the Crando, the Siren... Sirens. Dibs. My siren's name is Brick, and she is the prettiest. Tina, why don't we just start now and figure that out later? Come on, girl, you know we gotta wait for Roland before we start. Tina, Roland's... You know Roland's not coming, right? He's not here anymore. Yeah, he's probably running late or something. We'll just start now. So, like I said... Roll for initiative, suckers! Okay, now that that long segment's out of the way, um, first off, we're gonna hit the save, uh, station there and then save and quit. That'll skip waiting for the bridge to come down off of the boat and allow me to save a little bit of time. And, uh, unfortunately, time starts before the cutscene because we have control of the character. Um, so, it just kinda sucks when that comes in, in, uh, speedrunning because it's like there's nothing you can do. Uh, you can't skip the cutscene or anything, so... Uh, so first off, we're gonna go ahead and hit this point here to spawn the dragon in. And something funny here is I found a glitch in which you could kill the handsome dragon, um, even though you're not supposed to, so... Um, right now we're just waiting for Mr. Bony Pants guy to spawn in, so we're just gonna go ahead and mess around while waiting. But if you hit the save station over here by the, uh, travel door to Flame Rock, and then go back to the dragon, uh, he will actually spawn in as a, uh, enemy you can kill, which is kind of funny, I don't know why that happens. So I figured I would just throw it in there just to kind of burn time, and you can see here he spawns in, again, even though he's not supposed to be there, and, uh, he can take damage. And it's pretty funny because when you kill him, it triggers the dialogue from Hatred and Shadow, um, from Jack there, as you can see. Um, which is really weird, so I don't know why that happens, so I guess because it's the same dragon from, uh, Hatred Shadow, so. So I didn't kill him in one shot there, it's not a big deal, I get him with a little back shot there, so. Finish him off there, and then we proceed forward here to Flame Rock. So you'll notice Sarah have my gun right back. And like I said before, it, it is a segmented speedrun, so each time I get to a save point, I can save and quit. I back up the segment and then keep trying again and again until I, uh, I'm happy with the segment, you know, it's fast enough or whatever. So right there, I saved and quit to skip the dialogue, and then we do it again. And doing that saves a lot of time, because uh, dialogue takes up a lot of time in a lot of games, so... Uh, saving and quitting is just the fastest way to skip it. So we hit the trigger point there for, uh... What's your name? Uh, Eleanor, Ellie, whatever, uh, to spawn in. And so we just gotta talk to her, and then again, we're gonna go ahead and talk to her and save and quit. Skip dialogue, and then proceed over to the next part. And you'll notice the uh, loading screens and stuff are really short. I cut them down because they don't count as time, so um, it's just kind of boring to sit there and watch that for half the video, so I cut those down for you guys. And now we have to head to the gatekeeper. And, uh, you know, the only thing we can do here is just double shot with the bada booms to uh, get over there faster. Talk to him, save and quit, skip dialogue. And, uh, yeah, so my setup is uh, pretty simple. I have my Norfleets for killing all the enemies, um, lesser enemies. And then we have the uh, bada booms for rocket jumping. And right here we have to hit the uh, fire on the pumps to burn them down. And so I grabbed a fire bitch just because it's accurate, has a good magazine size, and I shoot it from long range to uh, take them out pretty fast. 
And then we can go ahead and get rid of it and then save and quit, skip the dialogue, and then head over to the tavern. And uh, the rest of my setup is basically just the uh, Sandhawk and Money Shot and the Bee. Uh, just to one-shot most of the bosses and uh, kill them very fast because the Bee uh, gives the Sandhawk all the amp on all of the pellets, so that's what makes it so good. Right here, I like to mess around each time I have downtime just to kind of make it more exciting, so... Uh, we hit this guy, and uh, if you stand right here in front of the door, he cannot run away. So, with that in mind, we can go ahead and easily take him out and not have to chase him down. And I move left and right there to make him uh, come towards the door a little bit more to make him uh, closer to hit. So we'll trigger him and then get over to Mr. Torg. And we can go ahead and do a little rocket jump here and jump over the gate and just not wait for it to open. And uh, we can proceed to the forest. Okay, so now we're at the forest, and all we can really do here is proceed over to, uh, Davin, I think is his name? I don't remember. Darn. I played through this so many times, and I still can't remember their names. Uh, the guy that you're supposed to talk to, and, uh, so, the only thing I really needed here for RNG is speed from the, uh, Siren, or the Pixie, I should say. Even though it's just a reskin of, uh, Maya, if you look closely. And I didn't get it at first, but I got it on the second try, which is fine, because um, I still needed it regardless at least once, so... We can proceed over to him, and talk to him. And then we can go ahead and go over to the trees, and you don't have to kill the trees, which is kind of nice. Um, so I just grab the fruit, and then I can go ahead and kill myself and spawn back at the travel point. And I tried the rocket jump back to him, but it's faster just to kill yourself. And uh, a little trick I did here, I didn't really plan this, but it kind of just happened. Um, Basically, if you're in fight for your life and you hit a death zone, uh, what will happen is you'll instantly uh, die and go into the little uh, phasing uh, screen and then go to the travel point or the checkpoint, save station, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it just saves a little bit of time because you don't have to sit there and watch your body like uh, fall into the void. So you see here, I'll wait for the tree to come up, grab the fruit. And then I meant to rocket jump off, but I switched to my Norfleet on accident, and uh, my sham, which is a 94% sham, didn't absorb it, which is uh, kind of funny, and then I can skip the little uh, uh, animation of falling into the void, so. And then from here, we can go ahead and uh, rocket jump our way over here, and I lost $7 million, oh my god, that's terrible. Alright, so this segment is not the funnest one because we have to kill the dragons up ahead and uh, they're not fun because they fly around and dodge your attacks quite a bit. Uh, so that cost me quite a few tries to get this segment. Uh, but I was able to split this area into two segments because I save and quit to skip Roland from walking over to uh, Devlin, I think is what his name was. I don't even know, I'm just going to make him make up names. Doug. Uh, Doug here. Um, so basically we can skip Roland having to walk all the way over here when we meet him. And so that'll save time and allow me to uh, save my sanity because doing this whole area in one segment is uh, pretty difficult, especially when you're rocket jumping. Uh, because you have to be very accurate of where you're aiming and um, flying and all that stuff, not hitting walls, double shotting, and uh, yeah, it wears out your thumbs pretty hard because you have to sit there and melee over and over um, when you double shot. And uh, I did these segments multiple times, and over time it just destroys your thumbs, so. Anyways, we switch over to the conference calls there, and uh, we're going to have a slag one to slag one up, and then have the shock one to take out the dragons. And I had to reset a few times to make sure I did not get a blue dragon because they resist shock damage. Uh, so overall, this segment was pretty difficult, so I sat there and got the slag. And then I switched over to the shock and got the money shot on him, which is pretty nice. And then I was looking for the other guy here, we got the red. And then we're gonna shoot the shock, take him out. And this last guy was a little bit tricky, but I took him out still pretty fast. I did this segment quite a few times, so I, you know, just went with it. It was pretty good, so. I got him right here, then we can go ahead and switch up our gear for the next area, and then talk to Roland and save and quit to skip his uh, slow walking animation over to Devlin. Okay, so now we're going to go meet up with Roland and Danny, and head over to the Four Kings. And now Roland takes down the rock when you meet up with him up ahead, and uh, he's kind of slow at it. So we're going to go ahead and do some rocket jumping, and uh, get over that rock and skip it. 
Now, this doesn't take time, or it doesn't save time whatsoever, but like I said before, I like to mess around when I have some downtime, so why not? So we'll jump up here, and then go around to the rock over here. And then we'll just fall around the little crack here, and we skipped it. And now up ahead, um, we have to stop and wait for uh, Dilbert and Roland to proceed forward, because if you trigger the staircase, or if you walk up to the staircase uh, before they're actually there, it's going to trigger the audio from up ahead, thinking that they're there, and then the game will soft lock. And when the game soft lock, what, what happens is basically the game locks up and you cannot proceed unless you save and quit and restart. So, uh, we don't want that. So, we'll just go ahead and mess around here, do some uh, reload faking, and there we go, we got the reload. And I waited until they got around to the uh, corner here to trigger the audio. And you can see there, Roland's kind of just uh, sliding across the ground. And what I'm doing is allowing the audio to play um, to the point to where... Uh, Davlin here pulls out the... Oh, it's Davlin. I just saw his name. Okay. Davlin, when he pulls out the fruit. Because if he pulls out the fruit before he actually jumps down here, the game soft locks, like I said before. And so he pulls out the fruit here, and I'm going to go ahead and wait for him to get towards the tree, and then we'll give it to him. And what that'll do is basically make it to where when you give him the fruit, he doesn't slowly walk over to the uh, tree, so that'll save a tiny bit of time. And right here, we're just waiting for the four kings, so we'll go ahead and just mess around, shoot the uh, herald a little bit. And I forgot to mention, I'm using the herald, it's just a good overall weapon, and especially with the lady fist, uh, hitting a crit and money shot with the uh, herald is pretty deadly, so. So the tree burns up here, and we're waiting for the king to come out. And now we can't kill him right away, if you kill him too fast, um, he will just freeze up, and you can't kill the head, and then you have to save and quit, uh, because it creates a soft lock. And you'll notice I jump when I destroy the body, that's because it breaks the head's AI and they don't fly away. So, the money shot on him and then jump and then shoot the head. And right there I actually did not get the head kill, but we proceed over to the next king and then take out the head on the way over. And overall, I would say this area was pretty good, I never got hit once, I kept my B up the whole time, so... And another good thing here is Roland was actually over here by the gate, so I didn't have to run all the way up to the other side of the tree just to talk to him turning the mission. So that also saved time. Turn that in. And now we're heading over to the Dwarven Mines. So in UVA gem runs in the main game, um, if you save and quit and then uh, jump back in the game and use the fast travel, it will unlock the next area, but in this DLC that doesn't work. Um, in most cases, but um, up ahead you can actually do it once to travel up to the uh, Hatred Shadow. Um, so unfortunately we have to go ahead and do it the manual way and run to the door because they made the uh, waypoint right behind the door. So you actually have to trigger that in order to proceed forward. So there's no skipping that. So proceeding into the mines here, I reset it quite a few times to get these speed trends to pop up when I wanted them. Uh, so we had one right here, we didn't need this one, but I grabbed it anyways because it was there. Um, because we have to wait for dialogue up here anyways. So up here, we have to wait for the dialogue and then we can proceed forward. Uh, because you have to stand in the uh, green circle on the minimap in order to proceed to trigger the next area. So it pops up there, and I can go ahead and run through it. And I had another speed try in there, which does save time, so that's why I wanted to force that one. And then we'll go ahead and talk to the king. And now, the hardest part about speedrunning with the gun circle is keeping your gun circle alive. Um, not letting it end. So I have to sit here and kind of just kill some enemies to make sure it doesn't run out on me when I uh, need it. So, uh, But at points when I don't need it, I go ahead and let it end. So we'll just jump up here and kill these couple guys to give me an extra, uh, it would be 12 seconds. Because I have the legendary gun circuit come on. And I'm specting to yippee ki yay So... So we'll talk to Claptrap here, the wizard, and allow us to proceed forward. And he says we can't pass, so let's go ahead and pass ahead of time, because why not? So they put a pretty tall barrier here, you can see here I'm standing on top of it. Normally you'd have to do a double grenade jump to get over that um, with other characters. So we have to stand right here to trigger this waypoint, so we're going to go ahead and wait for the dialogue, and then trigger it, and then go ahead and do a backwards rocket jump to get up here. Uh, trigger up here, and then go ahead and head back. Well, and now from here, we have to wait for Claptrap to slowly make his way over to the door, so... We'll do some manual double-shotting with a grenade jump. 
And then we'll go ahead and head up the stairs and proceed to get our first lighter. So, yeah. Pretty exciting. There's points like this in the DLC where there's really nothing you can do except wait. Uh, but coming up ahead, we're gonna have some uh, pretty game-breaking glitches and just out of bounds and stuff. So, uh, be excited for that. So, we'll talk to Claptrap and get our lighter here, and then we'll go ahead and be on our way with some glitches. And you can see there, I threw a grenade, and the reason for that is because I wanted to be below half grenades on my uh, grenade count. And that'll make the game think you need grenades, so that's why the chat gave me a bunch of them. So we'll pick up the letter here, and then be on our way. And now up ahead, we can grab the letter ahead of time, skip the door, and then save and quit to uh, get back to the beginning, because we're going to be doing a nice little out of bounds. Go ahead and kill these guys with the North Fleets, get our uh, body boons reloaded manually. Or, not manually, uh, automatically, because we're spec into auto loader. Skip the door there to uh, save time. And then we can go ahead and jump over here with some rocket jumps and pick up the letter without having to do the little jump puzzle. Okay, so we're gonna head over to the Dwarven Puzzle, and we're gonna go ahead and skip it too, because, uh, we can, so. Uh, so right here, the wall is transparent, we can go ahead and jump through it, and then head over to the puzzle. And we have to do some nice little rocket jumps over the void, and, uh, yeah, it's a nice little shortcut. And on top of that, it allows me to split the, uh, area into two segments, allowing me to easily complete it a little bit easier, so if that makes sense or whatever. Uh, so we can go through the wall there and we trigger the uh, waypoint over here, because normally was, we're supposed to hit that, so. And then from here, we can go ahead and collect the letter, so screw the puzzle, we don't have to do it. So we'll pick that up, and then head over to the, uh, the golem. And now the golem, we're going to take him out pretty fast, don't worry about that. And uh, I've tried everything in my power to try to get the letter um, without killing him. Uh, but they put a huge barrier around the letter, so you can't actually get it unless you kill the golem. Go ahead and jump down here, you enter the lair and head over to the golem. The sorcerer brainwashed now we're going to be using the old uh, B Sandhawk money shot it. combo, and use the Norplate to apply slag. So right here my grenades are kind of low, so I'm going to go ahead and try to scavenge some while waiting for the animation for him to come out of the lava. And then we'll go ahead and get ready here, get the double shot. If you shoot too early, you can't slag him, so... And then shoot at his foot, because if you shoot at Greed... I think it's Green Tooth, or Greed Tooth, whatever his name is. Uh, he will deep like bullets, so I shot low on his foot to make sure I don't do that. Pick up the letter, and then we can go ahead and stand on the little point here. And unfortunately, I got glitched in the ground. It can happen sometimes when you uh, teleport, so it kind of ruined my running there a little bit, but not a big deal. So we'll pick up the letters and put them in place. And then turn that in. And right here, I missed the third letter, but it doesn't matter because uh, the audio is already triggered. So it's going to proceed the same way either way, so... And then from here, we can save and quit and fast travel over to the Hatred Shadow. The only time we can do this in this DLC. So this area is pretty difficult. I had to reset quite a few times to get this segment. Uh, there's a lot of skips and spots you can mess up in. And uh, up ahead, I didn't bother getting a speed shrine here because we're doing a lot of up and down jumping. Uh, so having speed with that is not very necessary. Um, plus, I mean, it would save a little bit of time right here, but I find it very difficult to rocket jump and use the speed shrine at the same time. Uh, you go so fast that you don't really have much control over your character and you end up hitting walls and stuff. Uh, so I didn't bother using it, so... And, you know, I'm only so good at rocket jumping, so I, I just can't do it, so... Uh, anyways, here, we're gonna go ahead and skip over to the bridge instead of going around. So, we have to do a nice little rocket jump wall climb here. And, uh, this was pretty tricky. It messed up, uh, quite a few times when I tried it, so... You end up hitting the bottom of the pillar and then bumping your head and then falling back down, which kind of sucks, so... Uh, so right here, we're gonna go ahead and skip all the gates. So, we can go ahead and get out of bounds and, uh, go around them. So we'll get up here, and then rocket jump through the wall here, and then there's a barrier right in front of me, so we're gonna go ahead and jump over that. And then proceed forward to the bridge. Just walk through the wall here, jump over here, walk through the darkness, and boom, we're there. 
So the dragon is a little bit tricky. Um, I could have saved a little bit of time on him, but the RNG of getting slag on him when he first spawns in right away is pretty difficult. And uh, so I just went with the manual kill where he kind of hovers above the bridge and then we just take him out there because he's just still and you can easily hit him. Uh, but I managed to hit a few shots on him when he first spawned in, so it kind of helps I guess, but maybe not really. But uh, So I just line up with this pillar right here with the B and Sandhawk. And then I land some shots and then while these shots are in the air I switch over to the uh, Lady Fest to hopefully hit a crit and get slag. But I didn't really get it, so we did whittle down his health a little bit. So he's going to hover right here, so I'll go ahead and pre-fire right there. And then we can easily take him out. And then from here, we can go ahead and head over to the uh, next area, which is the Lair of Infinite Agony. And I will go ahead and say now, we're not going to be there very long. Hell yeah! Okay, so now we're at the lair of Super Skips. <laughs> I guess that's what we'll call it. So we'll hit the lever here while strafing to the side. That will skip falling down into the dungeon. Even though the dialogue's saying, haha, you fell into the dungeon, you're a loser, you're gonna die, blah blah blah. Whatever. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and jump over the wall here, get out of bounds. And we can go ahead and uh, travel over to the next waypoint where the Wisp or Angel, whatever it is, will spawn at. And we can trigger that and then save and quit to spawn back up top and then do the same thing again. So right now we just have to wait for her to spawn over here. As normally we're supposed to be over there in the dungeon waiting for uh, her to open the door and stuff. But she's going to teleport right here in front of us and with that in mind we can just stand right there and she will be triggered. So I'm going to wait for her to teleport to the next location, and then we'll save and quit. And then we can go ahead and proceed on to her uh, next location. So she's over there to the left side of the map, so we're going to go ahead and go to the left. And then do the same thing to get out of bounds again. So we'll rocket climb the wall here, get out of bounds. And then right here, you can make it all the way over there with a double shot grenade jump perfectly timed. Um, but I found it pretty difficult to do, and it's just very easy to mess up, so I just kind of land right here and then just do another gonna jump uh, over to the next area. And then you can trigger her through the ceiling, so I do that. And then I go ahead and jump out of bounds, because uh, why not? So so right now I'm just waiting for her uh, waypoint to trigger to the next area on the minimap, so I'm just waiting for it to uh, tick to the side, and then we'll save and quit and uh, jump back in. So now we're going to go ahead and take on Angel, so we'll get out of bounds one more time here. And uh, yeah, so basically we had to pull off a one shot on Angel, which is not the easiest because she moves around a lot. Um, and we need slag on her right away when she spawns, and uh, yeah, she breaks your B-shield pretty easily, and it's just a bad time. So this segment took uh, quite a few tries. And uh, yeah, so basically getting the one shot on her allows us to go ahead and skip uh, her pulling up her... Uh, invincibility shield and then pulling down some spiders you have to kill and then wait for her to jump back down and then she puts her shield down and it's just a big waste of time so uh, getting the one shot is pretty important for this area saves quite a bit of time so we'll just go ahead and proceed over here and we basically have to wait for dialogue again so we'll switch over to the sandhawk lady fist and the b and the money shot class mod the chaotic good monk uh, people like to use the evil monk, but that extra crit damage isn't multiplicative, so I use the good monk for reload speed. So we'll break all the pots, burn some time, because why not? And then we got down to our money shot on our uh, Sandhawk, uh, so that we can line it up and get a nice little perfect shot on her head. And she has a very small crit point, so this is why this segment is um, pretty difficult, so... Alright, so she's spawning in here, we'll get her slagged up, and then we wait for her to stand still for just a second, and take the shot right away, otherwise she will break my shield, and we get the one shot. And you can see right there, my shield actually broke right after that, so you can see there, she's pretty fast at breaking her shield, so that's why this segment took quite a few tries. So right now, Jack thinks she's still alive, and then he figures out, oh, she's dead, I should open the door, so go ahead and go through here, and then proceed on to the final area. Okay, so we'll jump on the elevator here and trigger it and make our way up the tower. And we're going to be killing the sorcerer very fast. Obviously, it's a speed run, so we have to. 
Uh, but I mean, we're gonna be basically just making him non-existent. He's probably the easiest boss of this DLC, I think, so. Uh, so yeah, instead of going clockwise up the tower, we're gonna be going counterclockwise and doing a nice little rocket jump up to the teleporter. And we don't want to jump in the teleporter right away because that will soft lock the game. So we have to go around it and stand right in front of it for a second to trigger the waypoint, and then we can jump in. So we'll go ahead and run over here, and then the waypoint pops up, jump in there, and then we'll switch over to the Herald, Lady Fist, and the Sandhawk, and the Bee, and the Chaotic Good Monk uh, for the money shot bonus. And basically, we're going to be chaining our overkill bonuses off of each boss and making basically uh, easy work of these guys. So I'm not spam shotting the shield because that will deflect bullets and cause you to break your B shield. So, uh, so we kind of single burst fire that and get the slag on him ahead of time, and then take him out with the sandhawk. Now this guy resists slag or not slag, uh, shock. So we have to use the herald on him. Switch over to the lady fist through the inventory, get the 800% crit, take him out in one shot, pretty easy. And then we can go ahead and spam shot at this uh, spot here, and then take him out very fast. And then the final spot here, he actually has some invincibility when he first spawns in, so we just kind of spam shot there to take him out. And then now we have another cutscene, so I will meet you guys once it's over. Everyone's favorite invincible knight, Rowan! That's, that's enough, Tina. You did it. We've won. And Rowan showed up, and he was really happy, and everyone lived forever, and it was great the end. Enough! You can't just deny what Jack did to Rowan. I can't hear you! She's right, Tina. So do you want to do some side quests, or...? You need to accept it. Roland is dead! I know! I know! But it's my story! And... You know what? It's okay. He doesn't have to go. Not if you don't want him to. Yeah, keep going. I actually want to know how the story ends. Thank you. As the sorcerer's fatal spell hurtled toward the oblivious knight, it was clear that only a miracle would save him. But luckily for the knight, a miracle is exactly what he got. So I still have the B shield on, so I'm not going to rocket jump over because that will kill me. And going into my inventory is slower, and instead I just do a nice little grenade jump over and we're there. So uh, so during uh, recording these segments, I basically practiced them before I record them. And uh, I had some pretty crazy stuff happen. So first off, I wasn't recording um, during practice because I don't record my practice runs. And uh, I shot a pot and a uh, legendary came out of it, and I was pretty upset I didn't get that on camera, so... Uh, but I got a fast ball from a pot, and then also during my practice runs for uh, killing the sorcerer, I actually got a uh, couple double drops. I got a uh, curb blaster and a volcano in one run, and then another run I got a volcano and a conference call in one run. Which is kind of weird, because I wouldn't think you could get both those drops at once, unless one of them was a world drop. I have no idea, so... Uh, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and beat Butt Stallion here, and uh, get ready for the next cutscene, so... Uh, yeah, so we're going to slowly wait for Roland to walk over and uh, trigger the cutscene, so... Um, he doesn't have a hitbox right now, so we can just go ahead and stand right inside of him, and yeah, there's Roland, he's a ghost. I mean, technically he's dead, so it makes sense, but I'm, I'm terrible, I shouldn't bring that up, but... Anyways, we're going to trigger this cutscene, and I will meet you guys once it's over. Really good, Tina. Hell yeah. That was honestly pretty fun. Hey guys, that spy just coughed up the access codes to the Hyperion moon base. Anybody feel like blowing up a space station? Hell yes, I do! And so the Vault Hunters and their little psychopath headed back into the wasteland. Back once again into the world of blood and insanity they'd taken an all too brief vacation from. And in the days to come, they'd think of their fallen friends, of the adventures they shared, both real and imaginary. And they'd remember that no matter how bad things got, they were never truly alone so long as they had each other. I love you guys. 
Okay, so now the cutscene is over, and time ends once we turn in the final mission. And my final time was 27 minutes and 55 seconds, which is very good. I uh, beat my old run by quite a bit. My old run was 38 minutes and 42 seconds back on PS3. And uh, yeah, that's over 11 minutes, so good improvement. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this run. Uh, if you did, please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be epic. And I will catch you guys later. Peace out.